welcome to the Cavalry Catch-Up. I'm happy to say that joining myself and Ian today, we have Cavalry superstars or legends or power users. Yeah, any superlatives really. Um, got Elliot Mosher and Matt White. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey, good day. Um, it's uh, having been speaking to you for a long time now. It's uh, uh, good to put names to faces, finally. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of got that strange familiarity. It's sort of modern day syndrome where you feel like you know people even though you've never met them before so yeah really <laughs> sure. really nice to meet you um yeah and yeah thank you so much for for spending the time as well um we've, we've been sort of following along with your progression in cavalry obviously with with a keen eye and you know really grateful for everything you've been doing certainly for the community um you know and hopefully you've been enjoying yourself along the way um as you know we've got a loose kind of list of topics that we'd love to cover today uh, but, you know, we really want to keep it quite informal, just let the conversation flow in any direction that it decides to go in. Um, but let's kick off with some introductions. Um, Matt, I know it's silly o'clock for you. Um, so why don't we start with Elliot to give you a chance for the coffee <laughs> to kick in if you've had a chance to make one yet this morning. Um, Elliot, yeah, would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself, how you how you yeah. found us, et cetera? Yeah, totally. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Elliot. Uh, I make tutorials and scripts for Cavalry. Uh, my day job, I'm pretty much a generalist, so I kind of do everything. It's it's mostly motion design, but I also do some video shooting, editing, graphic design, kind of just whatever my client needs me to do, I figure out a way how to make it happen. Um, I You know, I was trying to think earlier about how did I actually find out about Cavalry, because I, I don't fully remember, actually. I think I, um, I think I got in with like one of the very first betas, um, like at the very, very beginning. So I must have just seen it, you know, like maybe somebody from a different motion design group posted it or something like that. Um, but I saw it and was just like, this is super cool. It was like, I, my dad's an engineer that rubbed off on me. Um, so just anything that's like extra technical and being able to build things uh in the way that cavalry is set up just kind of spoke to me well funnily enough it's our it's it's three years today that the uh that we went public with the beta so i'm not sure if that was your i can't remember when your first it, day was you might have been on board before then yeah because i i think it was so so yeah that was 2020 then yeah 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 yeah, yeah, three so, years yeah. Already. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> all right cool thanks elliot matt how about you how did you uh what yeah what's your sort of day today and um yeah, yeah sure. maybe it's a little bit about how you found us yeah sure so um i work at uh, gavit brewster art gallery at lean light center and so i'm the graphic designer there and do motion design as well um so like a lot of the work i do is uh, digital signage and social media and things like that so i um i think i came across uh, some medium articles a few years ago so you were quite prolific with releasing those medium articles and I've probably read through all of those um, yeah and it was just really fresh to see this new approach to how motion design could be done there seems to be like a lot of um, photoshop kind of alternatives and that kind of thing but they all pretty much were a clone of photoshop whereas cavalry is 100% not a clone of anything else it had like all these unique uh, ways of working and that that just really appealed to me so yeah, it's well, it just like the public beta that I beta that I um that I I use. So I haven't used it as long as Elliot. Yeah. Yeah, no, that it's yeah, it's really interesting to hear that. I think um you know we've I don't know whether you guys know some of the some of our background, but Ian and I and Ad, who's hiding behind uh, the screen here today, um, uh, we've you know we've all kind of emerged from another business called Mainframe, which is a animation production company, and yeah, so. Cavalry was really born out of sort of maybe the similar, don't want to put words in your mouth here, but, you know, we, we were kind of feeling the frustrations of, of, of using After Effects. And, you know, we, you know, we, we, we can't bad mouth After Effects too much because we sort of, we've used it a lot <laughs> yeah. and we've, you know, got a huge amount of value out of it. Um, but it was starting to creak a little bit for us. And, you know, that's what sort of kicked off this fool de fool's errand of thinking that we could do it better um and you know it's been a huge journey for us it's, it's it's really great for us to see the kind of work that you guys are producing and coming along with the ride you know being brave enough to take it on at that time and and sticking with us for the ride it's, it sort of means a huge amount for us you know we're a young development team young app 
new users, new ways of thinking, all those kind of things. Um, I think you kind of covered some of that, you know, what first attracted you to the cavalry. Um, is there anything kind of particular, Elliot, was there, were there some pain points in what you were doing in your day to day, or was it just literally just, it, it, it felt like something new and intriguing, thought you'd give it a go or something else? Yeah, I, I think for me, it was just, it was a new thing and I was just kind of exploring it, seeing what could happen. Um, so at that point I was still, uh, just doing everything in after effects. Um, and then just kind of learning it and just kind of seeing what could happen. Uh, it did, I think it did take a while to figure out how to translate some of the, um, some of the tools into client work, just cause I think that you have to have a different kind of mindset. Um, so I think, yeah, in the beginning it was mostly just making some weird digital art, but that was also really <laughs> fun at the time just to, you know, a new kind of artistic medium in that sense. Yeah. Matt, anything else on your side? Yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't actually come from After Effects. I've kind of come from Cinema 4D, so there's like a number of um, parallels there that I could kind of easily jump in from 3D to 2D, which was great. Um, yeah, the, obviously the duplicator, you kind of feel right at home. Um, and yeah, what Elliot was saying as well, like there is this that, that excitement, and you see that on Instagram and on Discord as well. People just excited to explore and try new things. Sorry, I was going to say that's really interesting coming from 3D because that's that's um, our background as well. And one of the things, one of the original kind of pitches for Cavalry was that we bring lots of 3D methodologies to 2D because so much of the innovation in animation software has happened on the 3D sure. side where the big books are with the VFX and all that kind of stuff, character animation, you know, um, 3D film, all that. And um, yeah, very little had been going on in 2D. So we thought we'd, yeah, what, what, one of the very arrogant thoughts we had was that we'd bring some of that innovation to the 2D world. <laughs> so yeah, we'll let you yeah, know yeah, totally. whether we succeeded or not. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, Chris. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to raise exactly the same point. Yeah, I think those, um, yeah, those methodologies that have come across, you know, we've, we always sort of looked on slight enviously from a 2D point of view there's all the innovation going on in 3D world and thinking, you know, why, why can't we have this in 2D as well? So, sure. um, yeah. And I think, you know, we, we've, we've tried to kind of um, hone in on some of the, you know, Elliot, you mentioned, you know, stick everything in the duplicator, make it wiggle around, you know, it's kind of, it's just fun happens in real time. Mm -hmm. And that's our kind of, you know, that's our gateway drug, I think really into getting people to have a play with cavalry. Um, this kind of leads on nicely to the next question that we had today, which was, um, you know, around is, are there any particular kind of features, you know, or uh, abilities that Cavalry has that you turn to, I guess, most either then or now or both, you know, is there, is there maybe it might be a, met a methodology or a way of thinking, you know, it might not be a feature itself. Is there anything that kind of springs to mind for you, Elliot, on, on that? Um for me i i actually just use cavalry for 98 percent of everything i do <laughs> so it's it's not like oh I, I use that for this and use something else for something i just fully made the switch um and you know i think it, it can depend on on the type of motion design you do i do primarily stuff with uh either illustration or just like native shapes um and so i found that i could just kind of transition over uh, and and do everything. I just I think it's a lot faster, and uh, all of the the tools that make things dynamic. So like dynamic renders, hooking things up to Google Sheets, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's like huge for me. So I've recently been doing um, some stuff for a, a coffee shop, and so they need labels for their bags, they need thumbnails for their website. I just set it up once, and I say, here's the Google Sheet. Here's how it works type it in, hit render, and then it spits it out in like 30 seconds. And there you go. There's everything that you need. Um, well, that's really interesting. So you're you're kind of using Cavalry there more for, that's for stills work, presumably, rather than animation? Yeah. So this this project is for stills. Um, I do primarily use it for animation, though. Um, I've set up some uh, like social media templates. And so, you know, I'll have a folder. Some of this is still like... Um, a little bit manual because I don't know enough about like setting up a web server or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, it's like I got my folder with the images and, you know, I can randomize the colors and everything. And so it can still have some animation. And for that, I, I view it as like um, most social media accounts. It's better if they post more often. So this can be like the base thing where 
it feels familiar, but with uh, with the dynamic tools, it can be different enough. So they always just have something to post and mm. then, you know, put like custom effort into like more hero type posts yeah. as well. It's um, really interesting, like hearing you talk about it from a stills point of view as well. Um, mm -hmm. One of, uh, well, I'll say our, it, Ian, this is probably one of your ambitions was, was um, you know, we've really tried to put a lot of effort into the drawing tools in Cavalry. So the idea that the pen tool is a, you know, a kind of something familiar if you're coming from something like Illustrator or Figma or whatever it might be. Um, you know, our, our kind of ambition there is to not need to rely so much on external illustration apps. Do you do you find yourself using Cavalry more from a kind of natively in that way, or are you still kind of stuck in your ways? Is probably the wrong way to say it. I, you know, do you still kind of gravitate <laughs> towards uh, an illustration program and then bring the artwork in? I, I think it's half and half for me. Um, I think part of it is that if I'm making just like a logo or something for a client, then I, I will use Illustrator. Um, I mean, probably in the future, again, I'll just switch over to Cavalry. But right now, that's just sort of my default. I pull it up, make some stuff. And um, I I think that for, for the stuff that I make, Cavalry does a good enough job of just copying and pasting the SVGs over. Yeah. Um, that that's that's sort of my workflow but typically like anything that i make for tutorials it's all in cavalry um and even for this coffee shop thing i designed the bag in illustrator but then everything else in cavalry okay cool yeah well thank you that's yeah really interesting i think yeah uh, when we're talking about dynamic rendering when i'm kind of demoing it to you know potential customers it it's kind of uh, weirdly simple in that you just have to explain to people that it's just a number that goes up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every time yeah. a render finishes, the number goes up. And then the idea that you can then connect that to anything you want and, and you know, and that will drive some change across your, your creative. Um, so it's really great to hear you're using it outside of, um, I don't know, building lots of different um, adverts you know, you're, mm. you're kind of doing it for different, I've, I've seen the file, so I know kind of what you're talking about, those yeah. different blends of coffee, different descriptions, mm -hmm. different brand names, whatever it might be. So yeah, it was really, really nice to see that when I opened the file up. Um, obviously we were opening it up because you had a problem with it, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Matt, is there anything, uh, yeah, sort of what, what's your angle? And well, I kind of know you do, I know kind of what you're looking at Cabri for, but yeah, where, where, what do you feel? What's the, what's your go-to, feature or yeah way of working um yeah actually i remember watching one of the other conf labs and uh you raised an eyebrow when someone was talking about using cavalry for stills and i am 100 percent guilty of that as well um coming <laughs> from a graphic design background like a lot of the stuff i've done was i uh, just done an uh indesign or illustrator just for digital signage uh for events and things like that so cavalry has just allowed me just to kind of step that up a bit um which has been great um I, I also use it, so this is for like exhibition branding as well. Like I've done a couple of, um, yeah, so yeah, at the gallery, you know, we change out the exhibition several times a year. So it's quite nice to work motion first and then bring everything, you know, then to see how the type treatments work in Illustrator and, and design or whatever for publication. Um, but one of the quirky things that I do use Cavalry for is some of the kids' activities that we have around at the gallery as well. So uh so one of them is just like a small dot to dot so i literally just set up this little rig in cavalry so i can just vector up a vector up a drawing and the duplicator automatically numbers everything and and everything else and away we go so, so it, it literally takes uh, it takes i don't know what one minute to create a dot to dot and all these little kids love it so yeah you wouldn't expect that <laughs> um that's, that's brilliant <laughs> uh, yeah also coming from a, a design background like the tool the type tools uh in cavalry are really awesome um, I just love the way that you can work with the, the different inputs and the formatting. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was like a really well thought out feature. And um, sometimes as well with certain designs that I have, it can be quite tricky. Like I don't know how you do it in another, um, like in After Effects or anything, but just the fact that you can just add these different inputs and um, if you're on a blank, I can't even remember what it's called, how you kind of link them all together into the one block. But um but yeah, I don't know. It's just such a, a clever, simple way of working. It's really great. 
So it um, sounds like you're building, you're kind of building systems, are you? You're using Cavalry to build systems that you can then reuse? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I've used the uh, control center as well, just to, um, just to input some of those texts uh, and put the, so the images and the text and things like that. I haven't really experimented too much with using Google Sheets, but that's definitely something that kind of caught my eye from the very beginning. I've just been distracted by a number of other things. <laughs> Lots of shiny toys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I will say um, that recently, like going into uh, Illustrator or even InDesign or something, I go to do something with the text and I can't because that's a cavalry thing. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> it's InDesign. It's meant for text. Why can't it do this? <laughs> yeah. Some of the some of the stuff. I mean, we've got a long way to go with text. I mean, that's the. It's such an enormous subject and a topic. But it's some of the stuff that we were really proud of was the procedural editing of text. So having a block of text and then saying turn every uh, every number in this block of text green, or all of the instances of the word the make them red, or whatever that kind of stuff. We're really really happy about that. And there's there's so much more that we can do on that front that we just haven't got to yet. But yeah, we it's um. We're, yeah, we're really happy with where we are, but yeah, a long way to go. Yeah, that, that stuff, Ian, as well, was uh, slightly inspired, wasn't it, by uh, a company wanting custom kerning pairs or triples or those kind of things so that they can lay out text and then, yeah, sort of make, do bespoke kerning pairs. That was the, the th that's set off the whole thing originally was someone who said one of the things that they really struggle with is some of the fonts they work with have eight different A's and, you know, whatever, you know, 10 different yeah. T's and, and they have to manually kern all of these things and it's a nightmare and it takes forever. And yeah, the, the thought, yeah, just immediately a thought came into mind. Why don't we just make it so that you can get two letters, you can say just the spacing between all instances of this A and this T or whatever, they all get, you know, negative 10 or plus 15 or whatever. And then anytime you enter a piece of text that, that sticks basically. So you can use that to kind of customize the font or whatever. Yeah, that's exactly right, Chris. And then yeah, so that's now that's a feature that's in Cavalry right now. Um, I yeah. think I would have one hundred percent quit design if I had to go through and match everything like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, a lot of heads slamming into desks. <laughs> uh, right. Well, all we've talked about so far is still imagery for an animation app. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sort of next thing on our list really was, uh, you know, you you guys are pretty prolific when it comes to making tutorials. Uh, you're putting us to shame a little bit. Um, I guess a um, bit of an open-ended question, really. But you know, Elliot, you've you've jumped in, and I I, I think you were and probably not one of the first, but definitely one of the one of the pioneers in terms of getting some tu tutorials out there. Um, I, I guess the question is kind of what what inspired you to do that? Um, was it a bit of a learning journey for yourself? Uh, how did it feel? You know, I've both Ian and myself have done these, having to listen back to your own voice and stuff. It's <laughs> horrific. Um, <laughs> and the, the worst uh, thing is, you think, "Oh, I'll just do a quick tutorial this morning." It's only going to be ten minutes long, and then and then it's you know Wednesday or something. You know, it's just I don't know <laughs> where, where does time go when you're doing oh, it's a nightmare. It, yeah, yeah, just, for sure. <laughs> there's, there's, I'm sure there's a question in there somewhere. I just asked. <laughs> yeah. You know, up on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think. Um, Definitely as like the learning journey, like teaching it again helps me retain the information. Um, typically, I will be working on something, figure out something cool, um, and then I have to make it again, but in a nice way because my files are always a mess. And then I have to write it down, the steps, because if I'm going to do a screen recording, and then I do the screen recording and I'm doing it again and I'm talking it through and then I edit it and I have to listen to myself go on for way too long. Uh, so that that kind of helps things stick. I think the first tutorial, it was a little bit like I made a really cool thing and I want to show people, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> just kind of show it off. Um, I, that was like a, a custom chat bubble thing. Uh, so that, that one was interesting. But yeah, it like Ian was saying, my first tutorials are all like 45 minutes long. <laughs> and so that's, I think for me, that's the biggest thing that I'm looking at that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know that anybody's gonna, gonna watch that whole thing. So recently I've been scripting it a bit more, but what will happen is like, and this is even like when I'm trying to think about a topic to do a tutorial on, I say, okay, I'm going to do something on here and you can put a random 
on your position. And well, okay, so the concept of connecting things, you can put a random on anything. And now let's look at the randoms attributes. And then you can do this and you can put an oscillator on there. So now let's look at the, and you just got on this rabbit trail that's like a mile away from where you were started. <laughs> so it's like, how do I kind of contain all that? Because I feel like it's important, but it's also like maybe not important for that video. You know? <laughs> Have you, um, ha how's, how's kind of the feedback been from, you know, your, your viewers as have people being getting engaged in kind of what you're, yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think generally people seem to like it. Um, I did ask in the discord, like, Hey, do you want 40 minute long tutorials or 10 minute <laughs> long tutorials? And they're kind of like, well, the 10 minute long ones. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, generally I think that, that people enjoy it. One yeah, of our uh, talking about long tutorials, we've uh, there's a, there's a guy Dom. He goes by the moniker Positronic Man, mm, um, and mm -hmm. he does very Dom. If you're listening, sorry about this, but you do very long winded, you know, just expansive tutorials. But the, one of the favourite bits is that at the beginning you can hear him opening a can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right, strap in everyone. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> I might have to start doing that one as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. Um, yeah, Matt, the, the thing that struck me with your tutorials that I really enjoy is you've got a really um, nice kind of throwaway way with words and you just drop some <laughs> drop some nice little bombs in here and there. Um, <laughs> does that come naturally or are you? Are you uh... I think it. I think it's because uh, I just get a bit over it and I'm just saying whatever I want to say. And I think I've yeah. probably just got to relax a bit more. And like, I, I think it's a great idea just to, yeah. Maybe have a beer and totally got a script a few more things. <laughs> um, maybe I need like a, a list on my wall with like a whole lot of uh, one-liners. We'll see how we yeah. go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I started this oh, mid last year, just putting some tutorials out and my wife had just started a night, night course. So I had one night a week where I was able to get my geek on and not be um, bothered or anything. Um, so yeah, once the kids were in bed, I'd just jump off the computer and just figure a few things out and see how it, how it ended up. Um, and yeah, and it's a total learning, learning, uh, exercise for me as well. And like the whole thing, like, as well as learning cavalry, it's trying to edit things down and tidy things up. And yeah, there's definitely some of my tutorials are very, uh, very casual and very roughly edited. I have this naive idea that I can just fix things while I'm editing and it doesn't always work out. <laughs> so, uh, I do. I know I uh, I mispronounce certain features and layers, and hopefully people just I don't confuse people, and hopefully people just get uh, know what I'm on about. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's been really good. It's been fun just to um, just to create those and put those out there and get the feedback as well. Yeah, I think for me personally, I'm really envious of the, of your style because you know, because it's come, because if weirding his tutorial is coming from us, we can't get the name of that attribute wrong. We we have to. <laughs> use the right terminology and so like as, as Ian says it's kind of oh no that's not right I've got to do that bit again uh so I watch yours thinking oh god that is a real real luxury to be able to do that and, you know, <laughs> that's uh, not a compliment you realize <laughs> yeah no I know I absolutely love it I think it's fantastic and I, and I love that kind of that you know just that natural flow to it as well I think it's really nice and, and really approachable um yeah i mean same question to you really have you has has um how's the kind of feedback been in terms of uh yeah, people kind of talking about it or has anyone kind of showed you anything they've done off the back of a tutorial or? Yeah, I do see a few little things on Instagram and people kind of um, tag me on some of some of what they produce, which is really cool to see. Um, I guess with with my tutorials as well, I just try to show more the the technical side of it rather than the creative side of it. I'm not really big on people just following through like in a step-by-step -step tutorial. I feel like yeah. if I just kind of show like the basics for certain things, then people can rework it however they want. And like the the flow tutorial that I put up, I think was the last one I did. Oh, yeah, a couple of tutorials ago. Um, I feel like that kind of showed the basics of how the noise um, flow effect kind of works, and they can just rework it however they want. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the the feedback has been pretty good. Um, some people have just contacted me for asking for further information, and I've shared some files and a few other things like that. Um, but yeah, no, I've. Yeah, well, it seems to be going pretty well. Yeah, well, you know, again, uh, repeating what we said at the beginning, just can't tell you how much we appreciate seeing it. it absolutely warms our hearts whenever we see new tutorial going up, and um, you know, I I almost stop every, anything I'm doing that day and watch them. That's the first thing I do. Uh, really exciting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's also really interesting what I was saying before as well. Like it's a bit of a learning process for me. There's certain tutorials that or certain files, like I've got hundreds of cavalry files on my hard drive. I'm sure everyone does. But I'll just sit on these files and then, you know, like a month might pass and then I'll just realize how how many mistakes I made in that file and there's so many changes that could be made or how efficient certain things could be instead. Um so yeah, I don't know. If I if I had a bit more time and I'd be uh, releasing a whole lot more. <laughs> Matt, do you ever have the thing? Sorry, let go. I was just gonna ask, do you ever have the thing where like a couple months go by and you're like, I'm trying to do this thing, and I'm like, did did I do a tutorial on this? How do I actually do this again? And then like you watch (laughs) your own thing. Yeah, I've done that. I just once before, but yeah, it's happened. And it's really annoying. It's like, what's wrong with me? (laughs) But yeah. yeah. For me, it was like I I'm thinking about it and I almost had the thought, like, hey, this would be a good tutorial. And then I was like, wait a second. (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i was sort of a nice um segue into that kind of we've got this question around the community we've um obviously as you guys know you're you're pretty vocal on our discord channel and um you know it's great to see you guys kind of being able to start to help other people and you know getting ahead of us answering questions which is you know, obviously a massive weight off our shoulders at, at times and, and, and really nice to see that kind of community growing. Um, how, how are you finding the community generally? I mean, it, it's the Discord seems like a really nice, friendly place to us. Nobody's nobody's talking anybody down. It's all very uh, lifting each other up, which is great. Um, yeah, just generally, how are you finding that? Um, Matt, should we go? You can go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd never used Discord before and it seems pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I think everyone is pretty excited about about cavalry and the sharing of different things. So it's great that you've got like the the tutorial section, you've got the playground section, you've got the sneak peek section, um, which I would love to see a bit more action in, by the way. And um, <laughs> but um, but but yeah, all in all, I think it's awesome that people can just kind of jump on there and just share whatever they want and and ask for help. And I'm sometimes a bit stubborn, and I'll just try to solve a problem myself before I actually jump on there and. <laughs> and pop a question up but yeah no it's it's awesome i think um yeah you know sorry so it's six thirty. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, elliot you've been just as vocal um yeah have you sort of enjoyed your you know i think you you, you start being you know the more you answer obviously the, the kind of bigger your profile becomes effectively on there are you, are you kind of feeling mm-hmm. that you're more confident in answering questions and because I know sometimes it's it's kind of, do I know what I'm talking about? You know, I, I get that as well sometimes. You know, is this the right way to do it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I think that you could probably look at my answers and that some answers I'm like, well, I think. And that's me going yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. There's probably a better way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. I, uh, you know, like Matt said, I, I like to try to figure things out. And for me, it's it's almost like a, a good natured race it's like okay a question comes in let me try to do something and then like matt will post first i'm like oh i, was almost I can there. see the little dots down the bottom of <laughs> elliot typing <laughs> i was like gotta type faster um but yeah i i think it's great and the community is super great and um what i like seeing is that there's some people who uh it seems like they've only been on the discord for like a couple months and they are also answering people's questions and I think that's great because I, I always try to tell people that like, if you've been learning something for a month, you know more than somebody who just started, right? Like, I don't think that you have to have the answer or, you know, tons of experience to answer questions. Um, and it, it does like when you have a bunch of people answering the question, it kind of shows the various mindsets and approaches that people take. And it also kind of shows that in cavalry, there's always going to be like five ways to do the same thing, you know. So it's it's kind of interesting to to use that as like a learning opportunity for myself, because um, there's I find that I tend to over engineer things, and uh, then Matt will DM me and be like, "Hey, uh, did you know that you could actually do it in two steps?" And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's cool." <laughs> So one one of the things that I really like is waking up in the morning, opening Discord because we're we're all in the same time zone. All of us cavalry people are all in the same time zone, and um, yeah, so no one's been near it for ten or eleven hours or something overnight. And then 
uh, you open it and then see there's a whole pile of questions and they've all been answered, which is just <laughs> absolutely wonderful. It's like, it's like it's cavalry, because this starting to happen is like cavalry uh, taking on a life of its own. It's a whole new phase for, for cavalry as a product. It's really, really good to see. But yeah, the mm -hmm. community come alive. I love it. <laughs> and another thing as well with like the new people, that are, people that are new uh, to cavalry, sorry, for people that are new to cavalry, they're not necessarily new to motion design. So they've got all this understanding from different apps that they're bringing in. And yeah, I've learned um, just some little, oh, sorry. That's my regular alarm to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, so I'll say it again. So um, for the people that are new to cavalry, they're not new to motion design necessarily. So they're bringing all their understanding from After Effects and Cinema 4D and whatever else. And yeah, there's, it's quite a technical field. So they've got different ways of uh, solving it into, in different programs. So yeah, it's just awesome that they can then just translate that into Calvary. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's... I, I, sorry, go ahead, yeah. I was just gonna say, I, I've run into that a few times where like somebody asks a question and I'll give an answer. And then it turns out that they're like a rock star motion designer or something. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't know, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see. I mean, we've got you know people like Greg from Ordinary Folk are popping up on there now and chipping in, contributing. You know, I think you guys are answering some questions for for him. So yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, that kind of stuff is is really really uplifting for us as well. Um, and yeah, that 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 kind of point around people coming from all sorts of different angles is also you know it's really interesting for us. It's just this kind of font of potential new features and all these kind of things. Um, uh, but yeah, tying all those ideas together is also really interesting. It, it kind of, it's, it's been sort of educational for us in terms of, you know, we're talking about making labels for coffees. We're talking about doing dot the dots. You know, we're, we we didn't start with those things in mind. That's not that's not why Cavalry came, came to life. Um, but it's just, that's been really, it's been great for us, you know, in terms of the way people just, like you say, Cavalry is essentially a tool and it's kind of, you use it for what, what the, the application you see fit for it um but yeah it's funny you know just i'm doing this dot to dot and this doesn't work it's like well it's not for dot to dot <laughs> <laughs> okay here's it. the question that makes us nervous um what's on your feature wish list <laughs> elliot you go <laughs> uh okay let's see i have some notes here <laughs> uh, I, I think uh I mean, I've I've brought it up before. I think that one thing that would be cool is to have some kind of a component folder or object, something where you can pick the um, the attributes that you want to see. So it's basically a control center except for an object and mm -hmm. instead of for a comp. Um, I think that that'll be big, um, just because it's like for me. Again, I over engineer everything. So my my setups have a lot of layers. So being able to like compress that down and then quickly access something, um, that would be good. And then I, I think this is on the roadmap, but like a, a more fleshed out um, uh, node editor, something like Blender or other programs that I don't know of. Yeah. The um so on the on the component side that's actually something that that we very nearly added very early on and it's kind of been sitting very nearly finished mm. for several years now um yeah. <laughs> basically, basically you just need to jump back in and um, and get that finished it was it was there was we had some real issues with presenting the the user interface but that it was all technical mm. stuff but mm -hmm. um I, yeah i think that um being three years better developer will really help re revisiting that but um and on the other side of the of the of like improving the the flow graph so where you yeah see mm -hmm. those things it's um that's something that we've made some progress on recently conceptually so there's now we're now very close to having a design for something like that so yeah nice. we're um we'll, we'll get there it's really tricky because I don't want to terrify people uh, because sometimes people look at those things and just think this is too complex I don't want to go mm -hmm. anywhere near it Whereas some people, some people, it's really useful to have such things to see everything laid out and all that kind of thing. So giving everyone, people who want to work in a layer stack, giving them that, and then people who want to work inside, inside the matrix, giving <laughs> giving them the ability to do that as well. Yeah, I think it's it's really yeah. important. Just brains work in different ways and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, really, really happy to cater for everyone. But yeah, it's been tricky because just because of the way that cavalry 
just it, not only is it, it can you connect everything but you you also have dependencies and hierarchy so if you have a mm. child layer then obviously the parent moves the child moves as well and it's representing that kind of stuff like how do you do that in there because right. sometimes sometimes that's very relevant because it means that mm -hmm. for example if, if you have a, a parent moving a child you can't then connect the child's position to the parent position because mm -hmm. it, the other way around is already happening and so mm -hmm. representing things like that and that's what that's what got cracked recently uh so um that's why we can move forward with this stuff so so um on the it's on the cards it's on the cards so but nice. yeah it's at, the, it's at the drawing board phase but definitely moving forward yeah awesome yeah uh, yeah, going on from what Elliot was saying about the nodes as well. Like I've used Expresso. I used to use Expresso quite a bit in Cinema 4D. And yeah, it, it it's not the easiest thing to to jump into. But I think once you kind of get the fundamentals of it, you know, it's got that flexibility. And yeah, I don't know. It's going to be awesome when it does come out anyway. <laughs> um, so for these uh, feature wish lists, I have a some song from Cinema 4D. Just the asset library, which I think would be pretty handy. Mm -hmm jumping forward and you know once you've like i've got yeah a million and one different files so just being able to grab the gold nuggets that i do produce and then just save them in a library so i can come back to them later on it would be awesome and i guess that would kind of work in what with the um components that elliot was talking about um i was also thinking like one feature that could be kind of handy and this is not sexy at all but a different way of setting up constraints um, I was thinking like a live constraint mode. So you basically might have like a modifier key. You drag the, drag the child on top of a parent and it will snap to yeah. a, a point mm -hmm. or an edge or a face. And then it's dynamically set. And then maybe you could set the offset, hit enter and away you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's just going to, it's going to save a little bit of time here and there. I just thought it was a. No, it, it's all, it's because it, that, that's such a great idea doing it like in, in context, basically, because at the moment you've got a, you've got a decide everything beforehand and then go and find the menu <laughs> option or whatever and it's yeah you can did i get them the right way around do i need to do them this way around you know all that kind of thing i hate that stuff and that's how it works at the moment so it works but it's not ideal whereas what you're talking about it's a lot more work for us but it's <laughs> yeah. going to be so much better but yeah we can be completely on board with that yeah doing doing anything in the context where it matters that's yeah all about that stuff so yeah um another one i had i'm not sure how gimmicky this is so please just feel free to edit this one out uh voice to text for and i feel like this could be quite cool for uh, like lip sync as well as social media and uh, marketing and things like that interesting um, we've got a few scripts on them um, uh setting up certain you know markers and arrays and all that kind of thing around 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 strings and with our with our with javascript obviously we have the web apis where you could hook into a service that does that but yeah that's um that's yeah that's really that's really cool so what what's what would be so what kind of what kind of uh is it long, long form uh long form voice to text or uh no i was just i was just thinking more short form for yeah. social media and things like that yeah cool, um, okay. yeah so but yeah i don't know i i feel like it's one of those tools as well that could be work um could be used in uh, a few different ways that's why it could be mm -hmm. used for, for lip sync or it could be used for um just general motion design or it could be used for subtitles so there's like three different yeah. uses there yeah. But then here I am trying to sell it after I say it's not a sexy idea and it's a bit gimmicky, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's de that's definitely come up a few, a few times before as well with uh, with some other other people. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, like you say, I think some of that's kind of uh, the the people sort of doing shorts and, um, you know, Instagram reels, those kind of things is, is, is a very popular thing to do, right, to annotate everything you're doing. Um, and yeah, certainly that the the markers that came in not too long ago, all of that, all of that kind of feature set ties in really nicely with with kind of some of those ideas. Mm. Um, and then Elliot, going well, sort of both really the the component stuff. The 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 thing I really like about that idea is being able to sort of package things up and then share them with people. And you know, this is obviously it's not a new idea. This it exists in other apps, but that idea that you can you can share those things and they can be simple or they can sort of double click and dive into the, the full mm -hmm. guts of that setup and, and learn how yeah. you put it together. I think it's a really nice combination of sort of friendly sharing stuff and then also kind of an educational side to it as well. So um, yeah, thank you for bringing that up because we've, it's, you know, there's a million things on the top of our to-do list <laughs> and mm -hmm. <laughs> hearing you guys talk about them helps float them to the top. Nice. Was there any other, yeah, I'm sure you've got very long lists. Um, were there any other uh, bits that you sort of feel worth mentioning? 
Yeah, to be honest, I've got the uh, the roadmap in front of us and in front of me, sorry. And I feel like a lot of my kind of nice to haves and, and features are pretty much on there. Uh, yeah, I'm just excited about the the camera, the 2.5D, mm -hmm. the connection graph, audio export. So it's all all in the works anyway. Uh, I feel like if I talked about any more, it'd just be probably a bit rude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Well, thank you. Um, talking of kind of features, I think that leads us on to, uh, I think with that being sort of too technical, you guys have both embraced the API that came out in Cavalry 1.4, um, a huge chunk of work uh, that was mostly on Ian's plate. Um, but, you know, that's really opened the door to being able to kind of uh, build your own tooling. You guys seem to have both embraced it. As, um, Ellie, I guess you're kind of from a technical background yourself anyway. So but I know that you've sort of been learning a bit of JavaScript along the way. And uh, yeah, maybe, I, again, try not to get too technical for people. But um, yeah, could you maybe tell us a little bit about your journey and how you found it? Yeah. So uh, I for coding, I'm pretty much just self-taught. Um, I started out learning Game Maker, if you guys are familiar, just to make games. Uh, and it, it's similar-ish to JavaScript, I think, in, in kind of how things are laid out and everything. Um, so then I think coming over, it's not a, a huge, uh, difficult transition to do that. Um, I, I think so far it's been pretty easy to work with. Um, the biggest, the biggest uh, thing for me is that I don't know all of the cool stuff that JavaScript can do. So again, I just find the the weirdest, most complicated runaround to get there, and then like I'll send it to Ian, and he's like, "Oh, well, you could just do this." And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think it's great, and um, I started working on uh, the duplicator sequence script just because I was working on a client piece where they just had a ton of, it was, I, I don't want to say PowerPoint because that makes it sound lame, but it's kind of like that where it's like, okay, here's a thing and then here's a thing and then here's a thing, right? And it's just doing that over and over and over again. And I was like, okay, let me just take, you know, an hour and make a script that can do this for me. And then 12 hours later, I had duplicated sequence. Um, so that's, that's kind of what started it. And it's just, anytime I see, a tool that I would find useful, I make it. And then if I think that other people would find it useful, you know, I kind of try to develop it a little bit more. Yeah. And now we we know that you're talking to Lloyd A scripts as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, so um, yeah. So we're, yeah, we're mind, yeah, what, what's, what, yeah. What are you what are you, uh, what are you working on there? Obviously you your yours some of your scripts mm -hmm. are up on A scripts. I'm sure um yeah we're adult yeah. adult kind of add some links to these things in uh, you know in the comments and stuff. Um yeah, kind of what what are you working on with Lloyd and, and how's that how's that going? Yeah, so we're working on getting the uh AE scripts and plugins licensing framework uh ported over to Cavalry. And so basically what that'll allow for is um anybody who makes a script or plugin for Cavalry can just hook up to that licensing tool and uh, be able to generate the licenses and check all that stuff. And the author of the plugin, they don't have to worry about it. Uh, so they've had that for After Effects plugins for like forever. Um, so it's basically going to be the same thing. It'll just work with Cavalry. So uh, we're making good progress. Uh, this past month, uh, a lot of work has been done on that. Um, I'm really bad at estimating timelines, but hopefully pretty soon we'll have something up that people can at least start uh, testing. Yeah, well, it's great. Again, you know, you guys are off into the unknown here, writing scripts for, a, you know, unknown user, user base and all these kind of things. So, um, you know, it's great. It's great. You know, hopefully trailblazing like this will, will, will kind of pay you back in the months, years mm -hmm. to come. So, you know, really appreciate some of it. And it, it's really exciting for us, obviously, you know, again, with our After Effects days ourselves, you know, we've been big, big kind of users of AE scripts and, and downloading those kind of plugins. Um, so, yeah, fantastic news to kind of get that going. Um, Matt, you've taken a slightly different route. Um, you're, you've got a couple of bits up on Gumroad, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So I've just got two scripts up there, Calico and Duoco. So, yeah, the Calico um, one was just really like a learning tool just to show people how you could... Um, work with color arrays in a few different ways. 
Um, so yeah, I've really got to get around to making that a bit more practical rather than just using the, the coolers um, <laughs> pallet generator. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I was just playing around and uh, I don't think many people use coolers, <laughs> but um, but well, yeah, it's just a, I got a, my main color palette. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. It created just for you, Elliot. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm just going to yeah play around with that a bit more and just to make it a bit more um, practical and useful for everyone. Um, yeah, I hadn't done any scripting or anything like before. Um, maybe I'd played with processing back in my 20s, but that was about it. So everything I learned was <clears throat> through Elliot, through um, through YouTube, a few things on YouTube and just going through the the docs. And I thought they were really, really helpful. And yeah, I've, I've created a, just those two that I've released, but I've also created a few others that I just use myself just, to, mm. just for day-to-day -day usage, which is pretty handy as well. Um, just yeah. to be able to... And yeah, like I, I am not a technical person. I am not a scripter or anything at all. But it, it was just cool to be able to jump in there and, and make those connections and see how it all works. Just having a few example files is all I feel you really need to to get going. And yeah, in the in the docs, you've just got all those examples, and yeah, it just kind of came together pretty quickly. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, I you know I I find myself. You know, you kind of want everything all the time, don't you, in terms of features like I've got this very specific thing that I'm doing and I need that feature. And I think that's where that's where the kind of scripting really comes into into its own where you're, you know, yeah, one day we might get there. But the fact that there's some very niche task that you're doing and you can build a plugin, uh, well, we call them scripts, but you can build a script for it. I found it really useful kind of, you know, just for myself internally with my day to day, even just sort of testing cavalry. Um, you know, writing little things to help customers with, you know, it's been really great to be able to extend Cavalry's already incredible feature set uh, <laughs> into, into into kind of, you know, wider and more, as I say, more niche areas. Yeah. Uh, and sorry, Chris, the other day as well, I was messaging you, messaging you saying I couldn't, you know, something was crashing or it wasn't working right. Um, so I actually jumped on a couple of days later and trying to put a video together to share with you, but everything seemed to work fine. So, uh, yeah, you know, that was that was a little script that I'd been uh, playing around with. I have no idea what the issue was, but it seemed to fix itself anyway. <laughs> um, Great that to was hear. my favorite yeah, so, kind of bug. <laughs> yeah. So this was just um, I haven't actually tested it too much, but basically it's just like a small proxy tool, so I can just swap out swap out um, folders, and it just basically generates a few. Um, sorry, it's a swap out smart folders. Um, so yeah, it kind of works, but I guess that could be a bit of a feature request as well. Like if there was a, a bit more of a refined process for dealing with proxies and things like that. Mm. Yeah, that, and are you finding that proxies are needed a little bit more when you're dealing with kind of raster with video and images and those kind of things? Yeah, just just images. Um, and so basically the way I'm doing it at the moment, I've just set up some actions in Photoshop so I can create my proxies in a separate folder. And then I've yeah. just got my smart folder there and then I can just open up my little script, select the image, hit import, and then it will label everything for me. And then I can just swap out that smart folder. So it works, but um, it could be a little bit more polished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Elliot, I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up, Elliot. Have you, have you, got, a, have you got a script that does not proxies, but will allow you to sort of, there's a value of 50 that you have in for working and then you can up it to 500. Am, am I getting mixed up? No, with... that's, that's Matt. <laughs> that's <your>, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a proxy image one and a proxy number one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All about the proxies. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, brilliant. Um, I think we've covered quite a lot there. Ian, do you want uh, do you want to be brave and do some oh. live demo of some brand new, yeah. not quite ready stuff? I'll be brave. Remember, <laughs> you cut out if it all goes wrong. So actually, yeah. just just before we get going, I have a microphone balanced on top of a vase here. So if there's a terrible noise, it's because I because <laughs> I knock that over. <laughs> right. Okay. So share my screen. Um, here we go. Ooh. Tell me when you can see my screen. So I hesitate to call Ooh, these demos because they are basically my development scene. So they, they, don't, they don't look that pretty. But basically, this is a demo of cameras and 2.5D being in cavalry. So amazing. a couple of things to note is that when you make something 3D, these attributes are just the normal position rotation. So making something 3D, which at the moment is this, 
this little button up here, but we'll we'll add something down in the in the scene window as well. Um, it just it, it just depends extra attributes basically. So if I if I open a new scene and then make myself a, a rectangle and hit three D, we just add these things on. So no, they're not different attributes. It's the same ones that you get. To. Right. So that was we were in this one here. So let's take a look at something slightly more complex. And what I like about this scene, why this is a good one to demo, is because. Um, if I if I can move the camera around in here, so I've got some camera controls which aren't refined, but I can basically move the camera around in the viewport, and then I can change the the look at point what I'm looking at over here, um, and I can do all of this while I've got this kind of noisy movement on the camera, and that's because we have offsets for camera position and for look at, so you can add additional movement like overshoot and all that kind of thing without messing around with your main camera animation. So just something that we're we're working on. And then the other thing that I wanted to show on this front is the fact that we've got some kind of Z depth, uh, no, Z fog, basically fog. And then mm -hmm. also we can put some some blur on that as well. So uh, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. That's that's where we're up to with this. There's so the, the thing that's about awesome, two and a half D, it's definitely not three D, it's two and a half D, but um the two and a half D hit kind of cavalry is about 90% happy that we've put two and a half D in and 2% absolutely furious. <laughs> so that, that, that 2% uh, of cavalry that's really, really angry uh, with us for putting two and a half D in is going to take a while to polish out. Lots of the tools aren't working very, very well. Actually, something that is worth showing is um, can we, if I go. Can we ask what that 2% is. <laughs> um, it's ma it's mainly to do with um, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, it's mainly to do with pre comps and uh, tools mm. in the viewport. So things like um, uh -huh. uh, the 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 transform tools rotate widgets completely broken mm. and things like that. Just they just need fixing. But so what would happen I if you put two pre comps over top of each other with a so obviously it's, I suppose you're still w working with the layer system there, so they'll all be independent, right? Uh, yeah, so it's um it depends. So you can have basically if I I'm gonna if I had a text layer in here, um let's move to this. So this text layer is it's a two D layer, so it, it's just gonna be if I, if I put it on top of the let's make it a different color. Oh no, let's try that. <laughs> if I, if I, uh, so it's at the top of the layer stack at the moment, but if I move it to the bottom, it goes underneath because it's but it's a two D layer, but it will respect where it is in the in the order of the stack, right? But if I make this three D it will depend on where I put it in the in the Z order. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be on top or behind depending on depending on that. And that will still work the same way with precomps. Uh yes. Yeah. So so precomps will, will be flattened into a layer. So you'll you'll still be able to see all the 3D in the precomp, uh, but it will be it will be in in another comp you could bring a, a precomp in as a as the three D layer. So it's kind of like you've got a TV screen. And you're putting it um, into your composition. Sure. So, yeah. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's tr trying to get all of that to work is slightly mind bending, and it's kind of about it's about half there at the moment. So, but um, I was going to say yes. Yeah, so, so some of the primitive tools you can uh, you can draw um, in two D space here. Now, this is where the demo goes wrong, Chris. Why? Well, so, oh no, 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 that did work. If I uh, if I move the camera around, yeah. So that actually. It, it did it created a 3d it created a 3d shape so you can draw yourself whoops you can draw yourself some shapes in 3d so if i move off here and then if i make a circle yeah there you go so i'm drawing this i'm drawing this in 3d space so that that ellipse there has been created 3d um and the the shape that i drew kind of respected where my camera was so you can see i'm, I'm drawing this this rectangle with perspective basically mm -hmm. so that's something that we've been working on to try and make it quite a natural environment um, so it's still it's still drawing as if like you're looking at the main uh view not necessarily drawing from the perspective of the camera. Yeah, you you are drawing you're definitely you're you're drawing a, a yes, yeah, so you end up with a square shape. You end up with a shape that looks non-distorted at the end uh, if you looked at it dead on without, you know, um right uh, okay. without any um 3d transforms on it or anything like that it's just what yeah but you'll but when you when you draw it from your camera angle you basically have this allow 3d option up here if i turn that off then i draw a square and it's that square is 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 a 2d square so if i'm moving the camera now that won't be affected right but if i turn on allow 3d and then i draw something you can see it's being drawn with kind of the with 
with perspective because mm -hmm. it's being inserted into the 3d environment or the 2 and 3d environment and then it's right and I move the camera but it's move but it's being drawn with um like z rotation or 3d yeah. rotation of, zero of zero yeah zero okay. rotation yeah yeah so I have a, I have a feature request. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll wait until it's done. But I think it'd be cool. If, like in in the three D, then when you place it, it's it's placed uh, with the camera's perspective. So, so facing the camera. Have, yeah, because then I I feel like it might be faster to set up uh, some three D things, and I guess I'm what comes to mind um i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but there's this dude his name's like day dues or something on instagram and he uses the blender grease pencil to make mm. these crazy things and so he's like i don't know how it works but when you're watching him work he'll like move the 3d camera and he'll paint something and then he'll move the 3d camera and so he's like sort of painting in yeah. the 3d space yeah yeah there's um there's a, there's an app but I can't remember Elliot and uh there was there was some feature in it and it might be Blender but you could kind of you could set the effectively you could set the z depth of the canvas that you were drawing on mm. so you could you know at the moment I think Ian I'm right, I'm right in saying that this is drawing it you know we're zero z zero but the yes, fact yeah, you can that's right, push yeah. that forward and back and and start then drawing in layers I think yeah. what you're asking for is slightly different but yeah that idea of yeah. yeah, it's almost it's beautiful. Similar, like, you're talking about vibe. VR, aren't you? <laughs> it's like a VR kind uh, of thing. Yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So pretty, yeah. We'll, we'll push, we'll push that request until <laughs> this comes. Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> once, once, it's, once, yeah, once it's all working and in there, then yeah, we can, we can move on to some of the the, the shiny things like look at constraints and stuff like that. And then, as Chris mm -hmm. says, that um, I think it, well, Maya certainly has that feature where you can you can determine at what um, depth you're you're drawing, um, things mm -hmm. like that. Would be really really cool. Um, so there is there is um aside from from two and a half D, there's one more thing that um I'll demo for you today. This what, this is so one new. last question. Yeah, go on. Go on. Uh, <laughs> it, it, does this uh just kind of replace the 3D matrix? Because it seems yeah, that, like it's the same. Yeah, um, so uh the, the changes that we're making for two and a half D are going to need to come in two in two steps because it, it's it's a it's a major change to the app. You know, there's a mm. there are many many hundreds of thousands. Yeah, there's more. You know, lines of code in Calvary. There are a lot, and uh, there's the changes to make two and a half D work um, with you know the small team that we are. We're doing it. Going to do it in two phases, really. The first phase is that everything, every layer, is basically going to be a card, and you can move the card backwards and forwards in the in, mm -hmm. in three phase, and um, you know, rotate them, and um, yeah, achieve some really really cool effects. Um, however, what we're not going to do right at the beginning, and this will be, you know, definitely for the for the first beta when when this first sees the, the light of day for 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 everyone to everyone all the pro users to to play with. Um, it won't affect submeshes. So that is, if you have mm -hmm. um, a duplicator, the items in the duplicator will all be in the same plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, having having it so that they're all in a different plane will be like form a part of a, a second phase that we're doing here. Um, but the, you know, I've, I've just been waffling. I've completely forgotten your question. <laughs> I, I was just wondering if if 3D matrix was going to go away. Yeah, that's right. So no, so no because of that. So okay. 3D yeah. matrix still has a use because the sub meshes won't work with two and a half D um, right. in the first in the first iteration. So so there is there is still a use case for that for the time being. So it will stay in there um, for now. Gotcha. Cool. Um, one more thing, one more thing to demo, and that is, um, so with the drawing tool, if I just draw something ooh, like this, and I go over to the stroke tab and make the stroke a little bit thicker, we have a new option down here for tapered width. Yes. <laughs> Where we can control, <laughs> we can basically control uh, stroke taper, uh, which works with uh, with trim. So um, I can ooh, set a couple of keyframes here. And we can watch this animate on. Mm. So taper strokes. That is so new that it went in today. <laughs> That's, how <laughs> nice. That's how new that is. So, so something that is cool is the camera controls that I, that I told you about earlier for the 3D camera. If you don't have a 3D camera in your scene, uh, we can just use the camera controls and it'll add one for you. So you can just start oh, wow. nice. experimenting. 
yeah that's cool anyway that's awesome that's pretty much that's pretty much all there is to demo i'm afraid <laughs> we've just yeah, there was a few awesome software that. release today this went into the, <laughs> <it's kind> of, <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> this is where we are i spotted there's like amazing. a few user uh, interface changes as well where the filters and deformers yeah, yeah. are that's a nice little touch oh oh really, oh, really? so <laughs> i know, you know that, too, was yeah. ne- that was that was an experiment that um okay you know chris did that go over to 1.5.1 or not i don't think it did no no. no, so that's an experiment I've basically put okay. in and then said I've said to the team internally, what do you all think? <laughs> basically, basically when you when you use a filter, it gets it gets added to the end. So it's the most recently used one at the end. And then um if you use a filter more than three times, it can then go into a list of your most popular ones. So mm. there's next to that there's a list. So the far right it's the most recently used, and then next to those it's your most popular ones. And the idea is just to um yeah more, it's just a fast save you a couple of clicks searching through a list yeah, and all that sure. kind of thing oh, i recognize that one but the but the minute i the minute i added it i then thought would it be more useful to show a list of icons of the ones that are already connected and now i can't decide what it should do so <laughs> this is why this is why it's gone to the team and i'm like what what do we all think is this is this terrible is this a good idea i can't i can't decide anymore so yeah, yeah so we'll see <laughs> I'd have to play with it, but I will say that I thought that it was a list of what's connected when I saw yeah. it. Yeah. There you go. Oh, right. Okay. But I, oh, I think about, that you, the man? way that you've described it sounds useful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it's a bit different to the rest of the Cavalry interface. So I'm not sure. Like everything in Cavalry is really minimal and just what you need. Um, there's not too many icons floating around. Um, but yeah, it, it would just save you a few clicks. Uh, and I, but then again, if everything's in alphabetical order, you can you're there pretty quickly anyway. But you are, yeah. yeah. Sc- scanning yeah. alphabetical lists is, is really fast. Yeah, that's um. But yeah, it, I I can't even remember what where the idea came from. So, anyway, it might not be in. It might not be in the next yeah. release. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, yeah. I, I think it could be useful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that I suppose you could possibly do as well is just have those favorites at the top, and there's like a little gap, and then alphabetical yeah. order underneath or something that's that's very true yeah. if you wanted to keep that beautiful clean interface yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool, cool. Uh, i was i've really enjoyed um following along with the the, the tapered stroke stuff um mm-hmm. it looks sort of effortless on the surface that has been an enormous amount of work um brian the developers who are working on that has been sharing some really really like just fascinating uh mathematical tests of uh bezier cages and all sorts of uh exciting thing going on so it's really it's great to have it in it's such a such a cool feature it's so fresh it's not really tested yet but um that's definitely making it to the uh the nearest next release whenever that's going to be i think so um yeah really really excited about that we've got a few bits to finish with um sort of capping ends and and those kind of things that still need some tidying up but uh yeah really nice little feature very up uh, and you know nice artistic thing as well yeah the, the challenge sure. here has been because obviously cavalry tries to be as fast as possible I hesitate to say real time, but it, it, cavalry aims to be as you know as fast as it possibly can, and lots of the things required to do tapered strokes are incredibly slow. And some of the things that Brian has done is, is sped up what would not the normal way of doing these things. It sped them up by by several hundred, if not thousands, of times. So um, he's done, done an amazing job. But so oh, yeah, wow. so it's 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 lightning fast basically for extremely complex curves. So yeah, we're very we're very very happy with it so far. But yeah, more to do. It's always to do. <laughs> is, is, sorry, is there a timeline with the camera and the two point five D? Oh, like oh, when it will be? Is there like a, a release date or a plan? Oh, um, so I oh yeah no I don't know oh, uh, pressure. So the <laughs> I, I I think so. What so we might we might need to cut this out, Ad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I, what I've said internally is that I'm hoping we'll have everything into a state where it can go into the beta. So for all of the pro users, uh, it. it in about a month's time so oh, cool. the I, i'd like to I, basically i'm going to turn off every part of the app that doesn't work uh, and and then and then we'll tell everyone don't use this for production use just use this to mm. play with two and a half d you know don't oh, don't sure. bring your you know your essential things your really important stuff in and ju- just because it, it's going to need so much testing because position for example and and rotation i know this is really technical but we're changing the data types from just rotation was just a number you know like it's 45 mm-hmm. degree rotated and it's now three numbers and just making yeah. sure the backwards compatibility of that and then not just that but if you had connections or you had keyframes that were moving those things over to uh, to where they should be uh, correctly um and then 
because Cavalry has had several versions of what even a keyframe is, going back to the beginning, we have to do backwards compatibility several times. So we just need to just need to make sure wow. it's all it's all solid and good. And that's why I think for the first release, we'll say don't go near it if for production work. But feel free to play. Let us know what you think, all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping I'm hoping a month, but we'll see. There's there's quite a lot that needs doing, but um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, the demo looked amazing. And yeah, for super sure. excited for that and tapered strokes. It's great. Yeah, it looks really cool. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, two and a half D dot to dot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I think we're we're sort of a bit over over our hour slot here. So um, I'll let you either end your day or start your day in your place, <laughs> Matt. Um, thank you so much again for your time. Really appreciate all your insights and input. And, you know, again, all the the work you're doing with the scripts and tutorials and helping people on the Discord channel. Absolutely fantastic. Great to have you as uh, Cavalry Super users. And um, yeah, I'm sure we'll speak again very soon. Um, so yeah, thanks again. Yeah, cool. thank you. Thank you for having cool. us. And yeah, thanks for making an awesome app as well. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. All right. Cheers, guys. Enjoy your days. Bye. 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 Bye.